Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching Ding! The Political Vigilante, Making Gotham Great Again. A lot of people ask, what is the Making Gotham Great Again? Well, I'm a Batman fan, and in that universe, Gotham, very, very corrupt city, that Batman had to do something about it because the cops were corrupt, the politicians were corrupt, the judges were corrupt, the only, like, people that weren't corrupt were, like, Jim Gordon. <laughs> Even Harvey Dent went nuts, went corrupt. Two-Face. And so he also, in several of the stories, the Dark Knight graphic novels that Frank Miller wrote in the 80s, which I love, and the end of the Christopher Nolan trilogy, Dark Knight Rises, they use the citizenry to help. He gets the citizens involved. So that's why I've always tried to have you guys involved because you bring up great stuff to the show and you can support what I do at patreon.com slash grandmelod and submit articles, which is what Adam Coutts did. Um, thank you, Adam, for supporting the show. And, you know, you get bonus content at Patreon and there's polls and early access to the audio podcast. You get all of the live streams. They're all archived over there. So it's a really great way to support the show. And that's what Adam did. And then you get to send me cool stuff like this that I wasn't aware of. So the World Economic Forum just recently got together and we're like, man, climate change is for real, which is like, wow, this group of just capitalist psychos that just want to rule the world and then have this forum where they're like, well, we'll see, you know, basically that forum is just a bunch of rich people cutting up the planet, you know, like who gets what. And they're like, Oh, if there's not breathable air and drinkable water and there's refugees and we can't make all of our billions of dollars, uh Oh, maybe we should do something about it. Which is like the one hope that maybe these capitalist jackasses are going to realize if everything's collapsing and governments are destabilized and there's hundreds of millions of refugees. Like I've talked about this before on this show. Like if South Florida, which is going to be underwater in the next 20 years, where are those people going to live? Where's the whole East seaboard, Eastern seaboard of the United States going to live? Rising sea levels. I mean, we're seeing houses get destroyed. Like, where are they going to live? What are they going to do? How are you going to make all your, like, what? So they're like, man, maybe we should do something about it. So this isn't some, like, celebration of the World Economic Forum, but to show you when they're like, oh, boy, climate change. It's like, yeah, yes. <laughs> so I want to show you this this video by them. The World Economic Forum. This is their prediction on what's going to happen. Hold on. I would, I would add, they're like Thailand and all these, these countries that are low lying. There's mass migration. Sure. But again, so is, so is Florida. Right. And the army Corps of engineers, uh, uh, like a year or so ago was like, we're going to build a retraining wall. And they went, Oh wow. It's all limestone. So it's porous. The water will just come up. You can't block it with a wall. There's 3 million people just in the Miami area. Where, where are they going to go? Like, it's not just, and we, and cause the, the, this is, this is where I, I'm like calling out the, you know, the nonsense of the world economic forum. They're just like, oh, it's these third, it'll only affect these third world countries. So it kind of gives people in nice, rich first world countries like America and Europe and Canada and Australia to go, oh boy, we should probably do something. No, no, no. Be very clear here, world economic forum. This is going to affect Europe. This is going to affect Sydney, Australia, Melbourne, Australia. This is going to affect New York City, Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, like big city. Like this is going to be a serious thing. Any coastal place. Look at the United States. 
a third of the United States lives on the East Coast. That's roughly a hundred million people. If they all have to get, if they all have to move inland, where are they going to go? Schools, roads, what are they all just going to move into? Like what's, where, what, where it's going to happen? If Manhattan is uninhabitable, where are they going to go? So let's be clear here, World Economic Forum. It's not just poor third world countries that we can just kind of pretend, oh, we should, someone should do something at. No, it's going to affect us. It's going to affect you. It's going to affect me. It's going to affect any idiot in Congress, any of these CEO maggots. Like it's going to affect them. And so those idiots hopefully will do something about it. Or they're, that's why they're all, these billionaires are building rockets. They're hoping to just fly on out of here while we're, we're, we're just like down here eating each other. Billionaires are great people, right? Florida has disappeared. So again, let's break each one of these down. Florida's disappeared. So all the residents of Florida are going to have to go somewhere. And when the reefs and 90% of the fish are dead, that is a huge food source and economic source is fishing. And if the crops, there's no room for the crops. Where's our food sources? If we can't have fish and grow crops, what are we going to eat? Yes. That's where the world that's where I have a problem with the World Economic Forum is they're like, what role could you play? Like, okay, if we all get bicycles, but these big corporations and the governments that they own don't do any real change, it ain't gonna matter. Don't put it on us. It's not like, oh, if we all got canvas shopping bags. No, why don't you stop plundering the earth? United States military, number one contributor, number one polluter in the world is the U.S. military. Why don't we stop bombing everybody? Why don't we stop spending trillions of dollars on war? How much? How many hundreds of billions have we already sent over to Ukraine? This ridiculous proxy war that is just destroying people's lives so military industrial complex can make more profits. So don't put this on us, World Economic. I love when they, that's what the problem I have with like Earth Day. So I was like, what you can do, and that's great. Things you and I can do. I drive an electric car. I use reusable water bottles. Okay, cool. But we need real leadership. Climate change solutions, we're going to need a top-down solutions, meaning it's got to come from the, it's, the government has to spearhead this. And it's not going to happen with Joe Biden and the Democrats. And it's certainly not going to happen with the Republicans who are flat-out climate change deniers. The Democrats don't deny climate change. They talk about it and then do nothing. Joe Biden has signed more drilling permits on public lands in his first year of office than Donald Trump did. So just so we know where, who, where the Democrats stand. I know he was too busy not codifying Roe v. Wade to realize that there was more drilling happening. So this is the, um, this is the, the thing that I, I like talking about and pointing out is that some of this, because it's the World Economic Forum, gets a little greenwashy. And greenwashing is when big corporations, you know, like 
Exxon Mobil is like, we spend $10 million a year on green technology, right? You make a trillion dollars a year selling oil and, and murdering the earth, but 10, it's like a little token gesture. And I do say this with regard to personal responsibility. That's why I say in the show, vote with your dollars. So if you do get rid of your car and start riding your bike and taking public transportation, you are telling like, we, I don't want to use this. If you use less, you are telling them, I don't, if you buy sustainable products, they are going, oh, maybe there's money to be made here, right? Like you put solar panels on your home or you vote to get it in your homeowners association at your condo complex or your kid's school or whatever, or the school you attend, you're in school right now and you want to, you can petition your school board or your student council to get sustainable products. That, that, all that stuff is important. I'm not saying not to do it. My problem is when the most wealthiest, powerful people in the world say, oh, the reason we have climate problems is because you, not enough of you regular people ride bicycles. That is complete bull BS. That's just nonsense. So, and again, it's another reason to pressure leadership. It's another reason why I think all of this stuff is interconnected. So a lot of people that have formed unions, like we've had a, over a hundred unions, hundred Starbucks have been unionized. Now we just, Chris Smalls just announced on Twitter that the third Amazon warehouse is getting unionized. And you might be like, well, Graham, what, what is labor and, and climate change? How are they connected? It's a great question. One of the reasons they eviscerated labor unions in this country is because they're very good at organizing. So you get a union, you, you cause a, you, you create a union where you work or you join a union or whatever. And you say, wow, we need this factory. Now that we're unionized, we need it to be more sustainable. See, now you have leverage and the whole union says, yeah, we want it to be more sustainable, you know, and that's big groups of people have chain can, can affect change. That's why general strikes are important. That's why peaceful, nonviolent, that's what Chris Hedges always talks about can impact things like these students walking out of school because of climate that you absolutely should do this. You're not safe because of the gun violence in America and you're not safe because of climate collect. And I think that timeline that the world I can outform just showed us like by the year 2040, it's this 2050, it's that by 2100, 2100 life on earth could be done. We could be all done lights out by 2050. Cause they didn't even talk about the extinction level events that, that I've talked about on this show, like all the methane gas that is trapped in the polar ice caps all gets released at once. It actually acts like a bomb and sucks up all the breathable air. So we need real action. We need drastic action. We need it now. I mean, I'm glad the world economic forum is like, boy, look, this could be bad and, and is doing something about it, but we need to pressure those in power. That's why voting for the Democrat, just vote for any blue, just anyone. When people say, yeah, but the Democrats are at least better than the Republicans. How? How? Where's the big climate policy that's happened? It hasn't happened in Joe Biden. The Democrats control the House and the Senate. And they're where? Oh, they don't have votes. The obstruction is there's always an excuse. Obama controlled all this stuff, the House and the Senate. He could have passed all this environmental legislation that would have made it impossible for Trump to roll back those laws. But he didn't. So the lesser of two evils is still evil. And centrist Democrats like, like Joe Biden, when he was running for office, said, we need a middle ground on climate policy. All that, all that did was ensure that we're all going to live to maybe the year 2045 or 2050 with Trump in office. We'll all be dead by 2040. Oh, wow. That's the kind of incremental centrism that we need. No, we need a real bold leadership. We need a real green new deal, which will provide jobs. And you have to come at them with it from the economic. This is what I give the world economic credit forum for you you, they're not going to listen to hippie stuff. They're just not, you just got to understand how they think those in power only care about money and power. So you have to say climate change is going to kill the profits. It's going to kill all of your buyers. A green new deal is good for business. That's how you have to sell it to them. Unfortunately, you can complain about that all you want. That's the reality. So that's what we need. Follow the money, connect the dots, get the truth. It's all about the money. So you got to show them about the money. You got to hurt their wallet. You got to I'm not buy their products. You got to show them, no, we're not working until you guys fix this. Right? And that's when you get to shave your knuckles for justice. Thanks for watching. Support what we're doing so we can keep talking about stories like this. You see it scrolling below. Help us out. Thank you. 
Oh, and see Ron Placone and I live July 28th in Portland, July 29th in Seattle, July 30th in Vancouver, Washington. Tickets at GrahamOwen.com. Now you can shave your knuckles for justice. Boom.